Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Focus today is going to be on variable refresh rate technology, which is something built into most modern monitors and how to get it set up in the most optimal way for iRacing. Now, if I'm honest, this has been an area I've struggled with quite a bit over the last couple of years. I have tried different settings and run with them for a couple of months, some more successful than others. But after a recent reinstall of Windows, I decided to dedicate a bunch of time. I tucked into a Blurbusters article that really explains in high detail the difference between V-Sync, G-Sync, NVIDIA Reflex, FPS limiters, and how to bring them all together. And I think I have a pretty good recommendation now for the best settings within iRacing and within NVIDIA Control Panel to get the most out of variable refresh rate for your setup. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the basics. Let's talk through the most commonly used terms when we're talking about variable refresh rates. VRR, variable refresh rate itself. This is a technology built into monitors which allows a monitor to match its refresh rate to the current FPS output of the game that you're currently running. Why is this good? Well, it is good because it prevents screen tearing and screen tearing is what you see on screen when the monitor's refresh rate does not match the FPS that is being output by a game. Input lag, another common one. So this is the amount of time that it takes from when your PC receives a signal, i.e. when you press a button on your controller or move your mouse, to when that action occurs on screen and you see it as the user. G-Sync and FreeSync. G-Sync is NVIDIA's proprietary technology for how to manage variable refresh rates with compatible monitors and with NVIDIA's GPUs. And FreeSync is simply AMD's version of a very similar technology. V-Sync. This is an older technology that's designed to keep your monitor's refresh rate in line with the game's FPS, but it was designed for static refresh rate monitors, and it can be used in today's setup, um, but it works differently to G-Sync and FreeSync, but it is still an important technology to understand how it works if you're going to use it as part of your setup. FPS limiter or frames per second limiter. So this is simply a software limit that prevents a game rendering more than a certain number of frames per second. So it artificially caps the frame rate within a game. NVIDIA Reflex. So this is a newer technology on NVIDIA GPUs. This is a software designed to minimize input lag through removing any bottlenecks between the CPU and the GPU for a particular game. In our case, this is iRacing and this effectively keeps the CPU and GPU in sync. Now bear in mind, if you're watching this video and iRacing isn't your game, NVIDIA Reflex is game dependent and the technology does need to be built into the software for any particular game. And finally, the R, the G, and the T bars that you see in the iRacing overlay. These are useful because it allows you to see what is happening with the frame time as you try different settings. So R is the time that it takes for the CPU to process a frame. G is the time it takes for the GPU to draw a frame. And T is the total frame time from the start of the render in the CPU to the completion of the drawing by the GPU. The lower the values uh, are going to be the better for each three of those bars. Now it's fair to say you don't need to be a deep expert in variable refresh rate and the associated technologies in order to get it up and running on your system, but it does help to be familiar with most of the terms and the reason being if you ever do have a problem, you're going to need to diagnose what's causing the issue and having an understanding of how reflex, G-Sync, V-Sync and FPS limiters play into each other can just help you diagnose and analyze what the issue could be. And so to that end, my recommendation is take a read of the Blurbusters article that I'll link in the description below it is a technical read it took me two or three times of reading it over to get a full understanding of how they tested and all of the terms involved but once you get a grasp of it it's great knowledge to have and as i said can help diagnose problems in the future before we get into the optimal settings for variable refresh rate on iRacing couple of things to check. First of all, does your monitor support FreeSync or G-Sync and is it enabled on the monitor itself? 
The way to check this, hit the on-screen display by using the hardware buttons on your monitor, check to see if you find FreeSync or G-Sync, and then switch it on on the monitor itself, just so that the PC then recognizes that it is attached to a variable refresh rate monitor. Now, because I'm running an NVIDIA GPU, this video will be focused on setting a variable refresh rate up within the NVIDIA environment. And so if you see on my screen here, I'm in the NVIDIA control panel, you'll know if FreeSync or G-Sync is set up correctly uh, for your NVIDIA GPU because you will see a menu item at the bottom here called Setup G-Sync. So you can click in here and as long as you see that menu item, you know that your monitor is telling your PC that it is attached to a variable refresh rate monitor. Monitor. Now the second thing to think about inside NVIDIA control panel and something you can get set up now before we get into the rest of the settings is make sure you set up a specific set of program settings profile for iRacing. So when you go into manage 3D settings for the first time, uh, there's a whole bunch of settings here that are sat under global. My recommendation is whilst you can change these and it will change when you are playing iRacing, I would go into program settings, I would find the iRacing sim, and then I would use this menu for any of the adjustments that we're going to make to the settings a little bit later in the video. So to have a separate profile effectively within NVIDIA control panel, just focused on on iRacing so that any of the changes you make don't impact how your PC and variable refresh rate performs outside of the simulation. Let's talk about the optimal settings around variable refresh rate in iRacing. This is based on both my own testing as well as the guidance provided in the Blurbusters article that I mentioned earlier. So within NVIDIA control panel, G-Sync set to on, V-Sync set to on, and the power profile set to prefer maximum performance. And then within the iRacing graphics sim settings itself, NVIDIA Reflex set to enabled plus boost. Now, what's the reason in particular for making those changes? Well, first of all, G-Sync, that's gonna prevent screen tearing when you're below your monitor's maximum refresh rate. So that's great when you've got a grid full of cars and instead of running at your monitor's maximum refresh rate, maybe you're running 10, 15, 20 FPS below that, G-Sync will make sure that you don't have screen tearing and any visual artifacting. Now, V-Sync on, because V-Sync combined with G-Sync, that's gonna prevent any screen tearing at all within the range of your monitor's refresh rate, so that's excellent. And contrary to popular belief, you can and should have G-Sync and V-Sync running at the same time. They do not get in each other's way. And NVIDIA Reflex, well, that's gonna automatically limit the frame rate to a few FPS below your monitor's maximum refresh rate. So mine is 144, NVIDIA Reflex caps my frame rate down to 130 and this is going to help remove any bottlenecks between your CPU and GPU when rendering frames. Let's walk through what all of that looks like when you set it up in NVIDIA Control Panel and within iRacing. So you can see in front of me here, we have NVIDIA Control Panel. First thing I'm gonna double check is I'm gonna head down to set up G-Sync. As I said, if you do not see this menu item, you either don't have a variable refresh rate monitor, you do have a variable refresh rate monitor, but FreeSync or G-Sync is not set to active within the monitor's menu, or three, you have a FreeSync monitor, but it is not compatible with G-Sync, which for some older FreeSync monitors might be the case. But most modern FreeSync monitors will be compatible with G-Sync, as you can see with mine, uh, and work perfectly fine. So for me, it's already set up. I've got the enable G-Sync ticked. I've got enable for windowed and full screen mode. This is important because I'm running in triple screens. I'm running in windowed mode. So I want to make sure that that second radio button is ticked and it's not the default. So do take a look at that. If I scroll down, you can see I've got my three main triple screen monitors. And then also at the bottom here, I've got enable settings for the selected display model. So once you've configured that, make sure you head down to the bottom. There will be an apply button for you if you're changing any settings. And once you've hit that, you should be able to come back and see all of the radio buttons and ticks in the right places. 
Once you've done that, you're going to want to head over to Manage 3D Settings in NVIDIA Control Panel. The first screen you'll be presented with is the Global Settings screen. As I mentioned earlier, you want to head over to Program Settings. You want to go and find the iRacing Sim in your programs. It'll either pick it up if iRacing is running, or you can just hit the Add button and go and search for it within your program files within your C drive. And here's where we're going to make a couple of the changes that I referenced earlier. And there's a, a bunch of settings, so just be careful to select the right ones. First of all, power management mode, we're going to hit prefer maximum performance. That's just going to help the GPU keep the clocks at their highest setting whilst you're playing iRacing. And then if we scroll down a little further, you'll see vertical sync and you'll see that is set to on. So neither of these two in bold are the default settings. So it's going to be important that you take a look at that, make the switch. And then as with G-Sync, there'll be an apply button and you want to make sure you hit that so that the settings then get saved. So that's step one. Now we're in the sim. Um, so we're going to take a look at the iRacing sim options. So we'll hit options, we're going to hit graphic. And again, mine is already configured and ready to go. But just to show you, top right or middle right here is where the reflex drop down is. Um, there's a couple of options, disabled, enabled, enable plus boost. Enable plus boost is going to give you the absolute maximum performance you can get out of the GPU. So that's why I have that selected. And then once that's all done, that should uh, adjust and cap the frame rate to where you want it to be. So if you just see here top left, um, you can see I've got 138 FPS uh, running right now. Now this makes perfect sense because Nvidia Reflex is capping my frame rate at 138 because I have a 144 hertz monitor. And then you can see my G and my T numbers are nice and low, uh, as well as the R number, which suggests that everything is working well and that you know my frame times are running pretty quickly, which is what we're looking for. Let's talk about the frame rate meter box within iRacing just for a second. First of all, if you don't see this and have no idea what I'm talking about, head over to options inside the sim, head over to the option tab, and then you'll need to just tick this show frame rate meter with button here. And then in order to see the graphic settings that you could see on mine, you're going to want to make sure that graphics uh, is selected and you can hit graphical or numeric. I like to have it numeric so I can see the specific numbers around frame time uh, as I'm making adjustments so I can see what's improving it and not improving it, where sometimes the graphical option shows it in a bar chart and it's not quite as clear. So that is step one. And again, just a refresher on the R, G, and T. Now, again, I'm not a super expert. Um, iRacing has a little bit more guidance for this online as well, but the short and snappy version is R is related to your CPU. So kind of the work that the CPU needs to do to get the frame ready uh, for your GPU. GPU is how long does it take for the GPU to render a particular frame. And then the T bar is really the overall frame time. And you'll see it's not an exact addition of R and G, but in effect, you want all three of these values to be as low as possible, and they shouldn't be too far from each other. So if you see a T value that here was say 10, 15, 20, then you'd know you've got a bit of a problem because your R and G values are low. Now, now, you're seeing this set for me as I'm sat in the pits. There's no other cars around. I'm in a test session, so then my values are extremely low. When I'm in a packed and full grid, uh, the values would be high. You know, my R value could be six, seven, uh, G could be eight, nine, and my T value could be in the 10, 11, 12 range. So it'll all depend on your graphics setup. It'll depend on the session you're in within the sim. Um, but this is where you go to diagnose any issues. This is what's going to show you within the sim if everything is working correctly or if you've got something that you need to lean into. Okay, let's spend a couple of minutes talking troubleshooting and how to diagnose issues with variable refresh rate within the sim. First of all, this frame rate meter box in iRacing, first port of call every time. Whenever you fire up the sim and you jump into a test practice, quali or race session, always take a quick look at this when you're in and out the car. Double check the FPS is where it normally is. You know, what are the R, the G and the T values, especially given the complexity of the track, how many cars are on with you at that particular moment in time. As a refresher, 
If R is very high, CPU bottleneck. If G is particularly high, GPU bottleneck. And if T is particularly high, especially if it's greater than the combination of R and G by a significant margin, that can often point to an NVIDIA reflex issue. Now, some of the things you can try, if any of those look a little bit off um, compared to what they normally are, you can head through to options. You can head through to graphic. And the first thing to try will be to turn off NVIDIA Reflex and see the impact that that has. Does it adjust the frame rate? Does it improve or worsen the T-bar? Just take a look at the overall impact as you make that change. Secondly, if for some reason your frame rate is not capped below your monitor's refresh rate, for whatever reason, you can actually force that limit within iRacing. Now, I actually do have a limit set here to 140. It shouldn't need to be used because NVIDIA Reflex is already limiting my frame rates to 138, but I have that switched on almost as a bit of a fail safe. So if in any race, for whatever reason, NVIDIA Reflex goes awry, I know that iRacing is gonna continually cap that frame rate below my monitor's refresh rate. So I'm still gonna have a smooth gameplay experience. The other area to investigate when you're troubleshooting, you know, to again, just adjust settings to see if you can diagnose the problem would be to head back into NVIDIA control panel, head back into manage 3D settings. Um, make sure again, that you're in program settings and that you've got iRacing brought up on the screen as I do here. And then again, you can go in here and just adjust the settings back to the default values. Maybe you want to double check VSync is not having an adverse effect on what's happening in the game. So you could go in here, you could switch from on to off or use global setting, which for me uh, will be set in the off position. Uh, and then, you know, you could even adjust this prefer maximum performance and put it back to the standard. In reality, this preferred maximum performance shouldn't really have much of an impact. So that's rarely going to be the option that's going to make things better for you. But, you know, adjusting VSync, adjusting NVIDIA Reflex, looking at the in-game iRacing FPS limiter. These are all things that are worth troubleshooting if you're seeing stutters whilst racing, if you're seeing particularly high RG or T values. These are things to investigate and adjust one by one to see if you can identify what the issue is and then see if you can resolve it by using a different combination of those settings. Last but not least, a couple of things to watch out for. Driver updates and significant iRacing game updates are always at risk of making adjustments or causing issues with variable refresh rate settings. Most of the time, it shouldn't have an impact, but a couple of months for me, I still don't know exactly what the cause was, but I thought I had all of my settings up and running perfectly well. But after either a GPU driver update or an iRacing update or a combination of the two, my T-bar was suddenly up in the 20s and I was getting horrible stuttering whilst I was racing, even in low volume practice sessions. It was brutal. It took me a long time to figure out what the issue was. You know, I did a reinstall of Windows not particularly for that issue but that's when I really sunk my teeth into the Blurbusters article to kind of work back through and make sure things were set up correctly so that's an extreme way to resolve the problem you know I think eventually I would have got there by making adjustments that I've just talked about within either NVIDIA control panel or the iRacing settings but it really does pay to keep an eye on that frame rate meter within iRacing and if anything looks awry take the time go back into the NVIDIA control panel make sure everything is set up correctly go back into iRacing, do the same around NVIDIA Reflex. And as I said, for me, what I really like having is the in-game FPS limiter set to on within iRacing. So it performs a bit of a backup function for me. So if there's any issues with G-Sync, with V-Sync, with NVIDIA Reflex, I know at the bare minimum, I've got iRacing capping my frames per second below my monitor's refresh rate, so I won't get any tearing. That's all we have for you today on the topic of variable refresh rate. Hopefully there's been a few pointers in there for how to either diagnose any problems or get VRR set up effectively for your iRacing system. If you do want to learn a bit more about the technicalities of variable refresh rate, that Blurbusters article will be linked in the description below uh, and is a great read. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one.